Thank you for staying with us. You're watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press, a look at what the national dailies are saying this morning. And we have Chris Kende Wonder, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, who is joining us from Lagos State this morning. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. I mean, we're having a conversation even before we came up. We were looking at The Guardian, and I think something that really um, that jumped out at me was the fact that a basket of fresh tomatoes now is 100,000 from 40,000 Naira um, in May. And then we have the 50 kg of rice, now 60,000 when it was 27,000 Naira in May. And so the headline here says that Nigerians grown as basic needs exceed real income. And a lot of, there are a lot of things listed here. We have um, noodles, we have palm oil, everything is now being so expensive. And here we see that 90% of Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet. What do you have to say about all of this? The prices are ridiculous at this point. From May to um, December, we're seeing like a hundred, a hundred and fifty percent increase in all of these things. And you know, it's time for the Christmas. Um, Christmas is just in time for Christmas Day. And how are people supposed to be, be able to afford all of these things? Yeah, on a lighter mood, often we were talking about how rice. Uh, those of us that grew up in the seventies. Uh, how rice was not a stable food. Uh, we only eat some of us, those of us from the very, very poor family, we only eat rice probably on Sunday uh, uh, or Christmas Day or New Year. My brother there we are not you know this yeah. I know, I know how it was. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that you know all these young uh, boys and girls mm. these days. Uh, once they go out, they go to the nearest city and eat rice, the yeah. rice, fried rice, mm -hmm. not rice. Party yeah. rice. Yeah. Party jollof. <laughs> yeah, party rice. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know, there's party jollof. Mm -hmm. yes. Party jollof is different. That smell, you know. Yes. But, uh, yes, but on a more serious note, um, we know this was going to happen. That, uh, that is why when we see some people in government trying to defend uh, our legal parties are getting better, the hands are better for the The new hope and the new hope and and MBS come out and say the economy is improving, there's so, so much growth. I continue to say that all these are finances because at the end of it, whatever growth you think it takes, if it does not impact the pocket of the average Nigerian or does not impact the life of an average Nigerian, to be able to afford, just afford, just the basic necessity of life, which is food. We're not even talking about shelter now. Shelter is a different thing because you could go into the cost of living and cost of accommodation across Nigeria now, very, very unaffordable to so many people. So many Nigerians are owing their rents, they cannot pay. But let us even talk the basic food. Food, so many Nigerians are going to sleep hungry. Mm. It started from 111 to 101 to 0, to 0, 011 to 0, 0, 001. Now, people are, I'm sure you understand the ratio. Now it is zero, zero, zero. So many people cannot afford to eat, both within the urban area and also in the villages. And that is a big problem. Look at the cost of rice, price of rice. Don't forget that also that we, at the time we are priding ourselves at uh, being able to produce more and uh, enough rice for the Nigerian market and us. My brother is from the place where rice uh, cultivation uh, uh, is well known. Yeah. And we can ask him now how many of those rice cultivation is still going on here. And so many that we used to have a back leg rice, we used to have KP rice, and the rest of them. Then it was affordable to a large extent. Christmas at this time, we received rice product, but now you can't see any. Both the imported and the local rice are not affordable. The price of a tuba of yam goes, the price of a tuba of yam goes for close to about 2,000 naira. The roof of bread is over 1,000 naira. And you continue to ask yourself, how will Nigeria feed? That is the problem. And that is why we say this government should hit the ground running. The era of grandstanding and saying that we are lucky to have a government. Nigerians are feeling the pains. And if something is not done, if something is not done, something will give. Because the rich are not sleeping because the poor are awake. Listen to that again. The rich cannot sleep because the poor 
our weight. Let us use our tongue to count our teeth. Hmm. So where do we go from here as a nation? Um, is, is there even any possibility that we might be seeing some relief anytime soon? Um, and I, I mean, from your statement saying the rich cannot sleep because the poor is awake, I'm, I, I think what I would deduce from that is there might be a fear of insecurity at some point. Um, we've heard cases of people stealing in traffic and, and all of that. So are we going to even get better as a nation? Would people feel some relief at some point, um, anytime soon? Or is this how it's going to be maybe for the next foreseeable future? Yeah, some people say it's going to be harder before it gets better. Do you believe in that for Nigeria? It doesn't have to be harder. It doesn't have to be hard. It's, 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 these are basic things. Agricultural products, Nigeria had one of the best fertile land in the whole of the world. If you're traveling from Lagos, from Lagos, from Lagos Nasri, from Lagos to or to Shagamo or to Benin, you see an array of vast land, green, lush. What that tells you is that those lands are Nigeria is one country where you just open the soil and drop something and it germinates. So we have been well blessed by God. The problem we're having is that our, our government is not taken out of the bus. We need to invest so much in agriculture. They depend solely, not only for, uh, for local consumption, but also for export. Mm -hmm. The way we, in a situation where we have to depend on oil, 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 oil every time is not helping matters. How much is even oil in the international market? The prices is going up, or is at a point. Also, we're having the issue of so the the issue is that we can make so much money. If you remember in the sixties, Nigeria had not discovered oil in this large quantity of the system. And you see that the regions, and that is what we're also talking about the uh, the the the, 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 the constitution, where we can allow the various regions to be able to look at what best they they have and what they can be able to produce and be able to. Get. Let me give you a classical example. The southwest was noted for cocoa. The north was noted for granite. The southeast was noted for coal. Most of the developmental projects that you had in the 60s and the 70s before oil boom was done by. If, I'm sure you've heard of the cocoa house in in yeah. Ibadan. Yes. Cocoa house used to be the tallest building in the whole of Nigeria. It was built by the southwest um, um, government then under Olowo. For money realized for cocoa, why Enugu is known as the coal city is because there is so much coal in this area, and it was being uh, it was used to be able to galvanize development in other places. Locomotive, all this issue of uh, you talk about the trains, locomotives, and so many other things. Then the north used to have the uh, the um, Kano pyramid, Kano pyramid. I grew up to know it because in the seventies, my dad lived in Kano. I saw those pyramids. Where are those pyramids today? Rice was in abundance. We used to have palm oil in my own region, in my own state of Imo State. We used to have palm oil. I, as a young boy, grew up knowing how, I know how to make palm oil. If you tell me, if, you, if I get the fruits, now, I can tell you, yes, for free, that I know how to make palm oil. We used to make a lot of palm oil. But do you know that we import palm oil from China now? Yeah. We import palm oil from Malaysia. Do you know that we're even starting importing, importing gari from China? That is terrible. So what I'm saying in essence is that government should massively uh, uh, to try uh, try as much as possible to be able to invest in agriculture, make it very, very it's lucrative, for goodness sake. That is just on one part. Second part is also that most of this, because of insecurity, most of our people are not going back to the farm because when they get, they get kidnapped and get killed. Mm. So most of them don't go. They don't go to the farm again. Then the third leg to it is that even when they get this uh, um, um, food product, to be able to move them around is also difficult. One, the roads are terrible. You can't move. Moving things from the north to the south is a problem. Then the second third, they also want that is that the prices of moving them as well. You know, the price of fuel, you know how much the, a, 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 a liter of this will cost. Now. So it's a multiplying effect which the government have to look at holistically to be able to make sure that. So yes, we're going to have the short term, middle term, and long term. But let us even start with the short term before getting to the long term. Okay, uh, let's move as quick as quickly as possible. Uh, we we'll go into political matters. Still on the Guardian newspaper, we have uh, 
Jail awaits those forging Akir Dolu's signature, says Commissioner. Yesterday, the headline was that there will be no prosecution for the people forging yeah. Akir Dolu's signature. Now the Commissioner is saying this, maybe they will come for him. Uh, but just your comment generally on what is happening in Ondo State. Well, we say it time and time again on that what is happening is in the state is an operation. We are a governor, but almost one year we would stay out of the state and say that it's governing the state from another state um, or your state. It is never done. It's an aberration. But it is it grows on the people of on those state also to begin and through their representatives who are who are the members of the House of um, Assembly to be able to do it. If there's going to be doctrine of necessity, it's going to be fully empowering the act the deputy governor to now act as an acting government so that he can have the power to do it. What is happening is that is a, this reminds me of what happened during the Yaradra uh, era, when Yaradra was, uh, was sick. And all manner of things were going on in government that we didn't know, we didn't know who was in charge. The tribe was uh, in charge. Andoka, who was the AGF then, was in charge. And so many other uh, marabouts around Pila that Nigeria was on the tree for. The same thing is happening in, in this. Thing. And I thought by the, the truth called by the president would have saved the situation, but it seems that it's getting worse because people. I was a senior advocate of Nigeria from the United States, uh, Jigo, my very good friend, came out to say that some people are forging the governor's signature and trying to, uh, to use that to please the state. The Commission of Information quickly came out and said, oh, there's nothing like that. There was nothing like that. These are the, the, the statements of distractors or political or whatever. But you just less than some 48 hours or 72 hours, the, one of the commissioners in the state came out to say, yes, that the governor's um, signature was forged on a document that was sent to him. And it has been proven that those... Are, so, what are we talking about? So, I think that they need to do the need for um, And when we continue to look at the situation where the president had to be intervening, in that, the president is the president of Nigeria and not the president of the state. We have... The constitution is very, very clear about authority. The governor has the authority in the state and the president has... Yes, he might be a member of his party and rest of it, but I think this solution might only be solved by the people of Ondo State by themselves. I had to date already one of the people that the president has summoned the um, speaker and also the deputy, um, deputy governor back to um, Asurok to talk. But the part is that we need to do the need to. The, uh, that power, if, the, if it's seen and known that the governor is incapacitated and cannot be able to do his job, then the, 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 the deputy governor to be able to take over as the acting governor of the state and be giving full power to run the state. Things cannot continue to go this way. We are just a lawless society. That is the problem. Nobody respects the law. We just people just do things the way they like and how they like and just forget knowing fully well that nothing will happen to them and they will not be heard, uh, be heard accountable. For goodness sake, how can a state, a whole state like Ondo State, with all the intellectuals in that state, just be on a free port or an autopilot without a, with nobody in charge. And things are happening and nobody's talking about and nobody's doing anything about it. It's just quite unfortunate for me. Okay, um, staying in political matters, let's move over to um, River State. Um, in, we're looking at Daily Trust right now and one of the headlines here says, Fubara Mom, PDP demands fresh polls as 27 pro wk lawmakers join APC. What do you think about this right now? Yes, uh, another, um, River State is another boiling point. Uh, but let me, let me state this, that every politician has a right to become to any party or whatever he wants. But the fact is that the 1999 constitution is very, very clear on the issue of the camping. If you are decamping from one party to another, it is, it is well stated. And that is section 109 sub 1 and a G of the 1999 constitution as amended. If you are going to decamp from the party, from the party that um, got you elected, especially in the legislative, then you are going to vacate their seats. That is what that, that is what that session of the constitution. It has been taken off to the Supreme Court and but there's also a caveat. If there's any problem or whatever within the party, but it's neither here ever. as I said. 19, um, Nigerian Constitution, 1999 Constitution as amended, Section 109 sub 1 is very clear about it. So um, the PDP has the right to write to INEC to declare the seat of these lawmakers vacant as it were. And if INEC accepts that, then definitely there could be an election in River State where 
those seeds that we requested. But that they, they have to go through the meal. But it's quite unfortunate because we don't learn from history. It's just, I just continue to say we don't learn from history. Our politicians don't learn from history. Let me give you a, 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 another simple scenario. Something of this nature happened in, um, in Akwa Ibom State. When Gosling Akwa Bill was governor, when he left, sorry, when he left, and anointed or appointed or picked uh, Emmanuel Odom to become the governor of Akwa Ibom State. When he was elected, um, Gosling Akwa Bill, for whatever reason, decided to leave for it. And he did. And he wanted some um, members of the legislature to go with him. And some did, and some didn't. But the fact remains is that people thought that with that, that Gosling Akwa Bill was going to take total control oh, of um, Akwa Ibom and the rest of Lo well, and behold, when elections were ahead late, I think the second term were ahead. Uh, um, um, floods um, uh, goes with Akwabi. People don't know how powerful a governor is. The, a governor of a state is very, very powerful. We saw it happen in Edo State. You saw the problem between Oshomole and, and, um, and uh, what's his name, uh, Obaseke. That forced Obaseke out of APC. And the others of Oshomole thought that he had Edo State under wrap. For goodness sake, when the election was, uh, Obasek had to move to PDP. Ah, when the election was, he flood. In fact, even uh, um, Oshomali lost in his local government. So, our politicians should be very careful. I just believe that what is happening is just a fight between the uh, governor and his person. But, Mr. Wicked should be very, very careful. It's only God that gives power and takes power. Right. Irrespective of whatever has happened, I think God has been very, very careful, um, very, has been very, very good to Mr. Wicked. He was a minister, he was local government chairman, he was a, a chief of staff. Uh, now he became a minister again and rest. Let him not overstretch his love as it were. For whatever reason, I expected him to have um, be able to reach out to his boss and be able to resolve this amicably. Thank you. Where Amana is going, the next question is when is left some week to the country to take this? And with what is happening, it seems that they are giving enough power to the, uh, to the governor to now establish himself and ever to, to take control of. River State PDP as it were. But let's see and wait and see how this pans out. Yeah, let's see okay. how it unveils. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> talking about, um, um, we've talked about politics, and right now we don't know whether this is tied to politics or not. Accidental bombing of civilians must never reoccur. Tinubu warns army. And we're just wondering if this warning is enough. Uh, what is your take? The one you know is not enough on to bring boost uh, behind it to uh, the corporate to book. That is only where it was because this is not the first time this has happened. It has happened in time. I know that there was time that an IDP camp was also bombed before, no, but there are bad. There have been instances of presidential discharges by our security agencies. And at the end of it, there's supposed to be an investigation. Until now, we didn't get to, nobody got to hear about that. Nobody got to know whether anybody was published. Let us not uh, be too far away from that. Yes, as may happen in this situation, there's what we call friendly fire, even in the United States, that instances where the United States military have been uh, bomb or certain uh, areas and individuals that are in the Iraqi and some other in Syria and rest, where at the end of the day, like that. even their own personnel were involved. But this is an accident that was avoided. If in journalism we are told and we are taught that when you are in doubt, don't publish. I know you, I'm, I'm sure you know that. That is what we are taught in, in journalism. If you are in doubt, don't publish no matter how. The same thing should happen to you. When you are in doubt of um, the situation, and you know that you cannot be able to verify whether these people are actually bandits. They don't need to bomb. Even if you say they are embedded with bandits, does it mean that for being embedded with a bandit means that you must bomb? Because when you do that, you are going to keep the bandit and also the people. And thirdly also, some of these bandits also have captives. They have Nigerians that they kidnap, they pick. And it's within their means. So if you are going to do that, if you are going to bomb them just for the fun of it, then you are going to kill innocent Nigeria. Then I ask you again, what is the place of intel? The essence of in every in, in security agency across the globe. Use more of intel. What you use are those intelligence gathering. Do your intelligence gathering and get information on how to be able to approach issues. And a part of those that give you the intel are the villagers, are the communities, and the rest of them. So, but by the end, by the time you start bombing and killing them, then always you, you are not getting it right. So, then lastly, is what I also call interagency um, relationship. 
The problem we are having with our military is that there's no interagency relationship. The army is doing their own thing, Navy is doing their own thing, Air Force is doing their own thing, civil defense is doing their own thing. If there is intelligence gathering and intelligence sharing, probably the Nigeria Air Force would have told the army that, please, what we are thinking that is a bandit and not bandit, please don't. Say. And it was not it was not uh, an aircraft that they used drone. If you are manning an aircraft, there's a possibility that before the pilot drop the point, you say, mm, I have a second look. This thing, this um, guys, they look like bandits, they look like a second look. But if it's a drone, once you send the message, recalling that drone is not so that is why I'm saying that let them be very, very up. And then the investigation should be done. It just goes beyond just say, Oh, it will never, it must not happen again. Let those that were behind it, if my company should be punished. So this act, it's act as a deterrent to others uh, within that rank that engage in this kind of thing. But as I said, accidents do happen. And it's just unfortunate that we lost one to three innocent type, just like that. All right. Well, we hope that this type of errors don't happen because when we look at the trajectory of things, it has happened in time past. And we hope that this would be the last one for now. Um, so let's move over to the Daily Independent newspaper. And one here says, my resolve to keep Nigeria secured has not waned. That is President Bola Tinubu saying that, um, yes, his, his, revol his resolve to keep Nigeria safe is still right on track. But would you, would you think that the president is right on track right now? Are we seeing um, Nigeria being secured at the moment? Well, it's a double-edged sword that caught it that way. Yes, he's trying his best. Under the circumstances, but uh, I don't think we've gotten there. Uh, we might be on our way to uh, that securing Nigeria, but it would not gotten is a walk in the park. Um, let me give you a classical example. The um, report coming in this morning says that 26 people were kidnapped in Abuja, FCT. I'm not talking about another place, FCT on Sunday in Dede area. Then another report also came in that. Three people, four people were kidnapped in Buari area. Uh, I think in Buari, yes, one of the probably uh, also in in Abuja. Uh, one woman and three children. One of those kids was a six-month baby. That is in Abuja. That is where the president resides. That is where we have the seat of government. If that is happening, if they, then you cannot imagine. A traditional that was kidnapped. I think crossover yesterday. One of his age was also killed. It is the same thing across the board in Oba, in Anambra State. Yesterday, about 10 people were kidnapped. One of them was beheaded. So when you put all this into context, you now ask yourself that, are we really willing to work at this insecurity? Of course not. And there's going to be a rise within this period, because this is the yearly type period, and that crime seems to uh, rise that much. So in as much as I commend the president, the ability, the insurance, saying that, yes, he's, he's called out to be able to Call the issue of insecurity. But let us also make sure that we put everything in place. Yes, there's an, a Nigerian Army conference going on in in uh, in Ponu State. Uh, we are senior officers of Nigerian Army. That is where the president uh, went to. Uh, we made that speech. I hope that what will come out of that um, conference will be utilized and be able to use to be able to call this. There's also high level of insecurity also going on in the north. It is not just at one point. Security, security in South South. Security in the southeast, in the north, in the southwest, everywhere there's a high level of insecurity. And I hope that our security agency should be able to put up that thing. And I'll continue to say the best way to be able to win this for part of the best way is not just kinetics alone, but to also be able to win the confidence of the people so that they can be able to volunteer information that is done all over the world. Nigerians don't like volunteering information to our security agencies because they believe that those information given will get back to the a bandits, to kidnappers, armed robbers, and they will be harmed. So if we can be able to build that level of confidence between the people and the security agencies, it will be a long way. Because most of these people that are perpetrating this, they will live within us. People know them. People know them very, very well. They know them. So, but they are afraid to volunteer information, believing that those information will be traced back to them. So if we can be able to build up that confidence, then I think... Um, the, the, the ability to be able to cut this menace will be reduced if there is Okay. Um.
Okay, sorry. <laughs> this one is not a question. We'd just like to congratulate you because you are a Nigerian. Uh, the CAF Awards was more or less a Nigerian thing. Mm -hmm. The whole papers are carrying it. Osimen became the uh, men's footballer of the year, African men's footballer of the year. Uh, Oswala yeah. got it for the sixth time. Yeah. Congratulations to her. And Nadozie, uh, the best keeper in Africa. And the Falcons of Nigeria was the best team in Africa. So it was a Nigerian thing, more or less. So we'd like to say congratulations to you, as we are saying to ourselves yeah. as well. We're proud of this. Yes, you know. yes. It's a, yes. It's a big congratulations, uh, because um, the, the, the chair for me is the fact that this is the first time in 24 years that a Nigerian is going to, be, mm. um, going to win that award. The last time a Nigerian won it was in 1999, when Kanuanko yeah. and Messi Akide also uh, uh, did this, uh, they go to one with um, the male and female. And since then, we have, we, there are so many misses. In fact, there was a particular one that I thought that J.J. Okocha was going to be. Remember that particular edition? But we thought that it was going to be J.J. Okocha, and before you knew it, they took it away from us. So, uh, but uh, that is the part of it that I'm very happy. But if you go to the social media, go to the, 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 what is even trending more is the fact that a Nigerian uh, uh, coach and a Nigerian former captain and a former um, uh, uh, African Football of the Year in Nigeria, in the person of Emmanuel Amri, voted against Osimi. I'm sure you must have seen that. Mm. That is what his friend did. Well, when, when, mm -hmm. when, when the chips were down, you, if you read history, too, so, uh, so our it, former it, it president it right. voted against Nigeria when it was a very critical moment. I don't want to go into that story <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, congratulations to Nigeria. Yeah. It's a good one for us. It's, okay. a way to, it's a good way to end the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Chris, for coming on the show this morning. It's always a pleasure having you join us. Thank you. Thank you. It's always a pleasure having, uh, having you uh, to be with you. Uh, have a wonderful day again. Merry Christmas. In advance. You thank Tuesday. you, and you, you too. too. Okay, Chris Kainde Wandu, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, talking to us from Lagos here. He has already wished us happy birthday. <laughs> My heart is happy birthday. Happy birthday. Merry <laughs> Christmas. Happy Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Why does it sound weird if you say happy Christmas? I don't know. I think maybe merriment. People just like to say merry. Merry Christmas. Merriment. What is it? What happened to You're happiness? Eating well? and drinking. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>